Hey there, Denison ISD. This is Shonda Cannon, Director of Instruction, with an important update regarding our procedures for tracking professional learning hours. We were notified by PowerSchool that they would be removing support for ERO and replacing it with another system called PowerSchool Professional Learning. We have gone through our implementation training and are prepared to begin using PowerSchool Professional Learning. The end user experience is extremely intuitive. We do not expect many challenges as we make this switch in software. As I stated, PowerSchool Professional Learning will replace ERO as the Denison ISD system for keeping track of professional learning credits. Registration for Summer 2020 Professional Development courses will take place in Professional Learning, not in ERO. Summer registration will open April 1st. Let's talk a bit about our transition plan. All credits prior to January 1st, 2020 will be maintained locally on a final ERO transcript. There will be a printed copy in your Employee Professional Development file in the Curriculum Office, as well as a scanned copy that we will save electronically. It is imperative that the Curriculum Office receive all certificates for professional learning that took place before December 31, 2019 by April 1, 2020 so that that credit will show up on your final ERO transcript. There will be no way for us to record 2019 and prior credit in the new system. So begin now turning in those certificates for professional learning that took place in 2019 and before. All credits for January 1st, 2020 through May 31st of 2020 will be uploaded to the PowerSchool Professional Learning on June 1st, 2020. That way the courses that you have taken from January 1st through the end of this school year will appear on your PowerSchool Professional Learning Transcript. Another video will explain how to interact with the new PowerSchool Professional Learning System. I do want to give you a sneak peek at our Professional Learning PowerSchool login page. This is a screenshot of our professional learning login page. Don't focus too much on that background picture because it does change every hour. More information on the URL, how to log in, and how to navigate the course catalog will be the focus points for our next video. The purpose of this first video is to do a thorough review of the different professional learning credit types that we track in Denison ISD. You see the list of credit types on the screen. Let's review each credit type in detail. Let's begin with comp time. There are three days built into the school calendar that we do not report to work, but we are paid, we are compensated for these days. For example, this year, our three comp days were October the 14th, January the 20th, and February the 17th. So in exchange for these three days, employees must accumulate 18 hours of comp time, and I'm talking about academic training during off-contract hours. This equates to six hours per day. I need to make an important distinction. For those employees who clock in using time and attendance, this academic comp time is different than the comp time earned when you work additional hours. This academic comp time has been maintained in ERO since 2003. From January 1st, 2020 and forward, this academic comp time will now be maintained in our new product, PowerSchool Professional Learning. Next up is Continuing Professional Education, or CPE. This credit type is used to record professional development activities that occur during on-contract time. For example, if you attend a Region 10 workshop on a school day, those hours are recorded as CPE. 
Many times coaches attend coaching clinics, band directors attend conferences, or core academic teachers attend conferences that occur over multiple days. In this situation, it is possible to attend a conference and have part of those hours be recorded as CPE and part of the hours be recorded as comp time. Those sessions that took place during school hours would be recorded as CPE. While on the other hand, those sessions that occurred during off contract time would be recorded as comp time. Next up, let's look, at, let's look at gifted and talented credit. These hours are for any teacher who teaches elementary ACEs, pre-AP or AP courses, or any educator who has taken the initial 30 hours of training in gifted education. These hours, by Texas law, must receive six annual update hours that focus on gifted education. These hours are posted in a separate category on your professional learning transcript for documentation purposes. Next, let's look at our DISD professional learning requirement. In ERO, this credit type was called Professional Development Off Contract with Permission. In an effort to provide clarity, we will begin calling our local PD requirement DISD professional learning requirement in our new system. Let me remind you that this is not a requirement for paraprofessionals. This is a local requirement for teachers who do not possess a master's degree and administrators who do not possess a doctorate degree. For each five years of employment, there is a local professional learning requirement. There are several ways to meet this local requirement. One way is for the employee to accumulate 60 professional learning hours. Still another way is for the employee to take college courses. Six college hours, that would typically be two courses, fulfills the local professional learning requirement. The final way to fulfill that requirement is a combination of college hours and professional learning hours. A three-hour college course and 12 professional learning hours fulfills the local five-year PD requirement. These hours must be accumulated during off-contract time. Next up, let's talk about college credit. Any educator who is taking college courses needs to have those hours documented on his professional learning transcript. Previously, a transcript, the college transcript, has been sent to the curriculum office at the close of each semester. A new procedure will be implemented in PowerSchool Professional Learning because employees are going to be able to upload workshop certificates and college transcripts into the system for credit approval. This procedure will be explained and demonstrated in a future video. Our final credit type is Stipend and Continuing Professional Education. From time to time, there are sessions where the employee receives a stipend for attending the session. If a stipend is received, the credit is recorded as Stipend and Continuing Professional Education. These hours are not eligible for comp time or the local DISD professional learning requirement because the employee was compensated for their time by receiving the stipend. I trust that you now have a solid understanding of the various credit types that we keep track of in Denison ISD. If for some reason you have questions or need further clarification, don't hesitate to reach out to me by email or by phone. There will be two additional videos that I will be publishing to help with the implementation of our new PowerSchool Professional Learning System. One video will demonstrate how to log into the new system and how to register for a course using the course catalog. Another video will demonstrate our new procedure for uploading out of district credits into the new system. Thank you for your attention to this video and thank you for the work that you do on behalf of our Denison ISD students.